Hello world, today I'll show you how to color correct ProRes footage and log from a DJI Mavic 3 Cine, but the process is obviously the same for any kind of log footage and it doesn't really matter which color space or profile the footage has, the workflow is going to be the same. I'm working in DaVinci Resolve and I'll be showing you how to get footage from log state into Rec. 709 and the very basics of color correcting and color grading log footage, but the order of operations also applies to other color grading tools like Final Cut and Premiere Pro. So let's not waste any time. All right guys, so here we are in DaVinci Resolve and let me first show you the project manager, how we set up the color management. So we chose DaVinci YRGB color management and we are outputting SDR Rec 709. This is pretty basic, but in order to get the footage from the log state to Rec 709, you open a lot, you find the DJI technical lots, the conversion lots they made too. They made a original one, uh, D-Log to Rec 709, and they made one they call Vivid. It's basically the same, it just adds a bit of contrast and saturation. But let me add the standard a lot and as you can see let me just rename this for you a lot as you can see what this does if you take a look at the scopes and turn it off and on off and on gives you a lot more contrast saturation uh, and brings your footage into Rec. 709, basically you could say it normalizes the footage. From here you can do your color corrections and uh, your grades and whatever you, you want it to, to, to look like. So if a good idea is to do your basic exposure and balancing before the technical lot, the conversion lot. So I'm going to pre-pen two notes here. This one I'm going to call exposure. And the second one I'm going to call balancing. So in the exposure not, lot, uh, note, in the exposure note, normally you would do your lift gamma gain. So with attention to the scopes, let's just do some basic lift and gamma. So mo most important thing here is obviously the faces. Normally you would look at the skin tone in the face, but now this is kind of different footage. So this is from a mu music uh, video. And um, if you play the clip through, you can see there's not much movement. And this is just a brief clip. So I picked my hero frame to be the first one because that's the closest to the skin. Um, maybe bring the highlights down a little bit and go to the log wheels and bring the shadows down just a bit. So before and after, just simple exposure correction. Now the balancing note, I'm going to look at the vector scope and um, if you select down here the qualifier in this tool here and hover over the skin, if you have qualifier our skin tone indicator turned on here, you can see the skin tone where the skin tone would normally be in a balanced image. So if you hover over the image, you can see we're pretty much spot on. Normally you would select the forehead, but for obvious reasons, we're not gonna do that. So I'm gonna select her skin here on her neck and her hands. And it might be a little magenta, so Gonna take the gamma and take a little bit of the magenta out, and I can see I have a, lots of green in the in the wood here. So I'm gonna counter that carefully, not too much, but before, after, before, after. So her skin is, or their skin is looking good. It's still a little bit magenta in the skin, so. Gonna go a dial away from that. Now the thing about this qualifier, you have to move it. It doesn't live update when you turn your wheels. I'm using a 
mini panel by the way so that's why you won't see my mouse down here on the gamma wheel but I'm tweaking this gamma wheel to get a little bit more magenta out of the skin and then I'm removing some of the greens from the wood and pushing up towards some warmth so before and after and if you take these two notes the exposure and balance notes this before the the lot and after we did our basic corrections so that's what you know normally do before a lot um, you can do other stuff as well but let's move on and I'm gonna do a couple more notes here and um, one thing I notice is her fingernails let's zoom in on this I really don't like how they stick out here in this so I'm gonna do a hue versus saturation uh, correction on these I'm gonna bring them down the saturation down a bit so in order to do that I'm gonna use the qualifier I'm gonna select her nails and you'll see a pinpoints it puts these two anchor points and then this point here is her nail so I'm gonna bring it down a bit quite a bit like that and I'm also gonna bring the luma down so I'm gonna select it again and make them just a little bit darker so before after before after let me zoom out before after now the thing is with this selection now you're also adjusting her hair so before after before after if I don't want to do that you can do a power window around her nails just a quick one like this and obviously you want to track it it's not much movement going on but now you have this forward and backwards tracking button gonna turn the window off and then the nails before and after let's zoom in on that before and after much better now they're not as obvious as before um, I do want to introduce a little bit more or add a little more saturation so we're just gonna do it the old-fashioned way and just turn up saturation up a bit and on this note I want to do a vignette so just a quick circular vignette to make them kind of stand out a little bit so I'm gonna make this quite a big bit larger turn it around focus on them <clears throat> make it a little bit bigger and a lot of softness so in order to correct the outside I'm going to invert the note going to my back to my curves I'm gonna enable edible splines that's already on and then I'm gonna select the lower point turn it up a little bit and if you look at the outside you don't want it to be obvious you just want it to have a little effect that the eye goes toward the lighter parts of the scene so like that so before and after before and after I've seen some people make an outside note and then after they do the outside after they do the correction outside they do correction on the inside um, where they tweak the curves but here the inside is the skin and you should have the skin perfectly balanced and exposed in the first note so there shouldn't be any need for that but what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an outside note add note outside and I really don't like this video effect from these drone cameras it looks way too sharp and so I'm gonna go to the mid-tone detail here and turn it down quite a bit like 30 or something so if you see before after before and after maybe zoom in a little bit more it just takes the edge of this the footage so before after before after zoom out a bit it might be hard to see but that that just makes it look a little bit more cinematic 
And the final thing I think I'm going to do here, since this is a Western, we need some grain. So go to the notes. Oops. Find your film grain. Here you have it. And I'm going to go for the 35 millimeter 400T. Going to zoom in quite a bit, like 400% or something like that. Take a look at the skin. And I'm going to increase the grain size so it's pretty visible. I'm going to have to overdo it quite a bit here for YouTube and YouTube compression. But I hope you can. This is quite a bit more than I would normally do. But uh, I hope you can see it. So this is before. If you take a look at her skin here. And after. Before and after. And if you zoom out. Before. And after. Okay, so that's the basics of color grading log footage, bringing it into a Rec. 709 world. But let's just recap. So let's just disable all the notes and go through them one by one. So the first thing we did was we added the LUT, the DJI D LUT to Rec. 709 LUT to normalize the footage. Then we prepended a couple of notes and we did an exposure correction and a balance correction. After that, we did a U correction for her nails here. You can see here. We did a small vignette, subtle vignette. We brought the midtone details down in the two talents and we added some grain. Now you can, of course, always after you do your looks and look adjustments. You can always come back to your exposure and fine tune your exposure if you if you need to do that. So no, nothing wrong with that. That's perfectly normal. But this is the concept. This is basically this is how you get your log footage into a Rec. 709 world and make it look good.